And hello, everyone. Uh, just wanted to uh, take a minute here to uh, run through a few things with Adobe Audition as it relates to uh, controlling the recording volume and uh, not clipping uh, that would produce uh, maybe a less than desirable result for our production and voiceover work. Uh, so quite simply, what clipping, clipping does is um, it, uh, it overshoots the capacity of the uh, software and the system to... Um, really account for the loudness of the volume, in which case it will uh, tend to break up or um, not sound quite as uh, crisp as what we would want. And so I'm going to show you uh, some things here with um, Audition that um, I think would be helpful here. We'll just go ahead and open up uh, Adobe as uh, we normally would. And uh, of course, you get the welcome screen, uh, and then we do all of our editing here in um, in the multi-track um, phase here of uh, the software. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this here. The mic is set up here for stereo. I'm going to go with um, a left channel setup that will then ultimately produce a mono signal here in the recording phase. Um, so we'll, um, we'll go through that here in just a minute as well. So I've got my input set up uh, with that. And um, then we will go up here and we're going to monitor the... Um, record level, which uh, essentially is just letting us see a uh, preview of what the strength of the signal will be here in um, terms of the uh, the VU meter and uh, just how much sound is coming through the software. So uh, as you can tell, we're peaking out uh, somewhere around minus seven, minus eight, uh, somewhere in that range, which is a really good healthy signature. Um, what we don't want, and the purpose of this video is to avoid is to uh, overshoot this to where it is uh, pegging into the red. Um, I have some uh, safety uh, protocols here set up with the software that will um, prevent that uh, as far as how I have mine set up. Uh, but um, again, um, we're just looking for a good mid-range level there for um, the signal as far as uh, the setup is concerned. So uh, once we're comfortable with that, um, and you can adjust that um, setting with the slider on the Rodecaster Pro or uh, whichever mixer you might be using for your recording. Um, so you can inch that up a little bit if you like. Um, but uh, for this video, I'm going to go ahead and leave it right here because, again, that's a good, uh, healthy signal that we can use for this purpose. So uh, everything is set up and ready to go. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the voiceover um, work here as the sample. So we're going to go ahead and arm the track uh, as we normally do, which um, I will uh, do now. And uh, looking good there. And so uh, let's go ahead and do it here. We are your hometown Christmas station, 99.3 WZZB. Good morning, Kurt Nichols with WZZB News. It's brought to you by... Lucky Audio Video and Appliance in Seymour, where they make the good stuff affordable. Okay, so um, there you go. We have uh, a good, uh, healthy signature here um, that uh, may appear to be lower than what you're used to, but that's fine. Uh, what happens uh, in um, the processing of all of the carts that we uh, build is that it will go through uh, the signal processor, which is the Orban uh, processing unit, and uh, it will uh, raise levels up that need to be raised, and um, it will curtail higher levels that need to be knocked down. Uh, so, um, you know, my main point here today is that garbage in, garbage out with a, uh, a high setting uh, that uh, would be um, a, a tough sound file to deal with uh, coming in. So, um, again, uh, a, a good signature here on this. I'm going to go ahead and double click and get that over into um, the um, editor here for uh, this particular clip. And um, I'm going to go ahead and trim that out now. And um, with this case here, you can see uh, this actually is a little bit lower level here, uh, which tops out around minus 7, uh, averaging out uh, in that minus 12 range. So it's... Uh, it's probably healthy enough uh, for us to use uh, in uh, production, uh, especially when uh, we drop some uh, music below it. Um, you know, you'll be doing some things in the mix sequence uh, to blend this together. Uh, but um, 
for this uh, purpose here, I would probably go ahead and bump that up just a little bit more. So we're going to go the effects um, setting here and the amplitude, and we're going to amplify this uh, uh, file up here. Oh, let's go ahead and uh, bring it up about three decibels here. So you just key in a three and see where that goes. So uh, a lot healthier uh, looking uh, file here now with um, most of the peaks here at minus seven. And uh, I'm pretty well pleased um, with the way that that looks. So um, just as far as a visual, what we don't want is a file that will look like this. And I'm going to go ahead and blast this up uh, out of the top here. And let's uh, let's uh, add another, um, say, six decibels to that and see where that goes. Actually, I'm going to go up another eight decibels and um, really blow that out the top. So. You can tell here um, in this case where it's really filling the window um, with uh, the sound signature and even up the top you can tell where it's cutting off um, a high degree of uh, the, um, the louder sounds here um, and that could translate into um, a, uh, a nasty uh, sounding um, voice clip here. So um, again that's uh, tempting to uh, think that, uh, you know, the louder the better, uh, but in this case that's not necessarily true because the uh, software will account for um, a lower signal and bring that up to a volume that would be appropriate. So uh, let's go back here. Let's, uh, let's undo that. You can go back into the um, undo phase here uh, in the edit uh, box, and we're going to undo the amplify fade. You can see here also uh, that um, one of the core settings of Adobe 1.5 or 1.0 is that this is checked here to enable us to do that. So I'm going to undo that, and now we return right back to um, the signature that we want. So let's pretend for a minute also that uh, this is the finished audio file that we're going to work with um, and that it might be a produced uh, commercial spot as an example. So sometimes there's a temptation uh, to... Uh, maybe not trim this out in a clean manner and uh, to get a, a tight broadcast uh, between commercials, it's always good to go in and um, trim that uh, excess fat out there. This is, in this particular case, this is uh, just a small amount of time that would elapse uh, as far as dead space, um, but uh, by the same token, it will create a much cleaner transition between spots as we go back and forth. Sometimes. Um, I've seen spots where there might be as much as a second or even two seconds of a tail or beginning to the spot, and uh, that really is not good um, as far as uh, getting it as tight as we want. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down just a little bit on the other end too, and so there you go. So when you hit start, it's going to be right there, and um, it will um, bring you uh, right into the... Um, um, phase here of being able to um, just grab that and go as far as the uh, radio station automation. Uh, so um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this file. Um, I'm just going to save it under the downloads as a test file here. Um, and um, we're going to uh, bring that right back in uh, into multitrack then. I'm going to take that back out. And now we should have a, a pretty clean uh, test file uh, that we can drag into um, the uh, the mix here. So you can tell, uh, particularly at the front and the back ends, how uh, that file is really clean. So uh, let's go back here, and uh, on demand, it should just start right away. So you can tell uh, the beginning of the end, it's really crisp and uh, really tight there. Um, I might mention also when uh, you watch the VU meter at the bottom, um, this particular clip, even though in the, um, um, the edit view of the clip, um, it appeared to be topping out. Let's go ahead and back over here. Topping out somewhere around minus 7 to minus 4. Um, when we brought it back into uh, the mixer over here, uh, into the multitrack view, um, actually um, the gain structure was uh, topping out 
So just as an example, you saw the, the peak files uh, in that minus three range. So that actually is ideal. That's really where we want to be peaking out to give a little bit more headroom between uh, minus three and zero dB uh, to give it room to breathe there. So um, again, this is um, really an excellent uh, file to work with uh, that would be ready to air as is. Again, provided it had the content that we want as well as uh, the music and uh, the beds that we want to put in. So um, again, I just want to spend a minute to go over that. Uh, so like I say, two things, just be careful with the volume uh, as far as uh, your initial uh, recording is concerned. And then uh, on the back end of that, uh, once you get the final product, whether it's a, uh, a voice track or a cart uh, that you've produced, uh, go ahead and trim that out on uh, both sides there to the extent that uh, it will uh, create a nice uh, sharp spot that will um, transition on to the next uh, spot in rotation in a crisp manner. So again, I hope that helps out a little bit. Um, we could uh, do some more of these sessions here on some other things that um, uh, we could get creative with uh, in terms of um, doing mixes and mix downs and things like that. But um, again, just wanted to share this with you today and uh, Hopefully uh, you find that helpful in your production uh, situation.